and we're live. Thank you everyone for coming and watching us on a Tuesday. So this is Monday Night Draw uh, on Tuesday. So yeah, apologies for yesterday. Uh, just, sometimes life happens. Sometimes life happens. Yeah, uh, there was just no way around it. And when I saw that around, I think it was about 630 that I switched it. I, I thought, okay, I need to get on right away and let everybody know as, as well as I could. So I really appreciate all of you guys for coming and spending Tuesday with us this week. We'll be back to Monday next week. I saw Jeff Wheeler just said hi. Oh, Jazz Singh's here. Greg L is here. Uh, thank you, everyone. Kevin Mandevil. And uh, I said hi to a bunch of you guys, you know, just in the chat just before we started. Um, and so, yeah, today is Wonder Woman. Uh, Henry actually asked if I could show uh, the sketch. And so... Here it is. Oh, Henry didn't ask. Henry always asks. It's like a thing you do now. He you and Henry. Actually, he, it does is he ask? Does he actually he, ask? Yeah, I saw. Even though you, the... he does it every week for you, Henry. I actually I missed last week. I oh well, you suck. <clears throat> Thanks so much. I guess All you right. do need to ask Henry every week. <laughs> There's my tiny little sketch. Can you even see it? It's tiny. So there it is. Beside I can't all of see my it. tools. That doesn't mean anything, though, because I have old eyes. Dan Lassard is here. I'm lucky if I can see my face in the morning to put makeup on these days. Dan Lassard is uh, a Windsorite, I guess a Tecumsehite. Hey. He's a phenomenal airbrush painter. What? Speaking of phenomenal artists, there's sad news in the comic art community That's this right. week. Yes. John Paul Leon passed away way too young. Yeah. An incredibly talented artist. Uh, a schooled artist. He, he went to school all the way through, got a degree, and it really showed in his art throughout his career, just the uh, precision in, in everything that he did. He was a very influential artist and a wonderful person. I never actually was able to meet him. I know a lot of people that knew him, you know, decently well and some pretty well. And I regret now, certainly, that I never got the chance. So a uh, very sad day for, I'm sure, his family, all of his fans and uh, Meredith. What? I didn't meet him. I never met him. Yeah. But I know a lot of people. So. Yeah. So. Yeah. He was influential. <laughs> so. Our thoughts are definitely with his his family. And, this week. And fans. Yes. All right. All so right. I'm gonna go ahead. And so get started. I have to let the Finch flock know. I was informed today that today is International Chicken Day. You oh. didn't. You didn't know that, did you? No. Apparently, no. today is International Chicken Day. Today is May the 4th be with you. Fourth. It's May, May the 4th be with you day. See, we had good reasons for postponing. It all worked out. <laughs> yeah. But apparently, it's also International Chicken Day, <clears throat> which just works out so nicely because we've expanded the flock to include chickens. You're not kidding. The chickens are here, people. I was about to say you're kidding, right? But I know. I need like happy music. I need like da na 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 na. How do I switch to number two? You reminded me. Oh, you forgot. Okay, here, hold on. You go into the gear, and then you go to sounds, and it's right here. No, no, no you're still on one. No, oh, you're, so, you you're the worst. That's not the sound I wanted. That's the sound I wanted. Cause the horse is here too. Yeah, a lot has a, happened we have a pony here. in the last week. We have the cutest little mini. Because I know we're not about art right now. We're just about the Finch Farm. Right. That's, <laughs> that's what we're all here for. <clears throat> so now, the Finches have a pony. A pony named Stevie. You're going to be all right? I might be. A pony <clears throat> named Stevie and five little chickens. Well, you say the finches the chickens, have a pony. The finches don't have a pony. You have a pony. The kids have a pony. I think the finches have a pony. You have spent time with that pony. I have today, a mouth to feed. <laughs> today, ever I mean, he's barely a mouth to feed. He barely eats a flake of hay. Yeah, he's he's, he's teeny weeny. He really we have dogs that are they're not actually as big. Truthfully, they're not bigger than the they pony. Are close. They're almost the same size. I think they think he's a weird-looking dog and he thinks they're weird-looking ponies. So it's very funny. But what was I going to say? He's everybody's pony. Everett was grooming him and, and learning how to work with him today. But I was getting to the name of the chickens because I feel like people on the stream will appreciate this. Each kid got to name, ever got to name two chickens. Isaac got to name two chickens and Hayden got to name a chicken. I didn't get to name a chicken. You did not get to name a chicken. Everett's two names oh, are, recover. 
What's what's he always saying? M MGK. Who? Machine Gun Kelly. MGK. Yes. We named so, a chicken after Machine Gun. Kelly. Yes, he named one of his chickens. MGK. That's it. I'm moving out. MGK. <laughs> There's a limit. And then he named the other chicken Goose. Isaac named his chickens Ham and Cluck. And Hayden's chicken is named Red Circle Ball. We have a chicken named Red, Red Circle, Circle Ball. Yes, we do. So it's very fun. Because that is his favorite thing. It that really is his is. favorite thing. And so there you go. And a shout out, because I would not know that it was International Chicken Day if I was not informed of it by a very talented, special young man, Connor Ducharme. That's right. Yeah. And I met <clears throat> Connor because I bought... One of my other horses, if you've been on my Facebook and Instagram and the patches and horses and dogs and cats Instagram, then you've seen the little black and white pony that's gorgeous. I bought Monster off of Connor's mom, Tracy. And it turns out that Connor is quite the artist. And Connor is 10. 10, yes. 10 years old. And, and so 11 maybe, to, at the most, he's maybe, 11. Yeah, maybe 11. I think you said 10. Anyway. he's young. You I know to, he's younger than Isaac. So I'm going to get up and... So Connor sent us a present this week now, that arrived in the mail. I'm going to hold these up first just so you can see. They're a, a good size, but let me put it properly under here. Unfortunately, because of the way my camera is set up, it barely shows my page, so it won't really show uh, anywhere near as much as I'd like it to. Are but, you looking at this, people? This so is... Learning from tutorials online. And watching, all just watching Bob Ross online. And this is all with done with acrylic. Dollar store paint. Yeah, the cheapest paint you can get. And it really shows you the paint. It really does not matter. It's what you do with it. And I've never seen anything like this. That 10 is, years old. Everett looked at the next one you're going to show. And he and Everett was like, um, can I have that one for my room? He did. Uh, Connor, this Everett wants our teenage boy, our 18-year-old our teenager, wants this one up in his bedroom More of a and he is it is very bob ross like because he's learning from watching bob ross but i'm telling you i could watch bob ross i can't do that that is talent yeah like inc incredible yeah. incredible Just talent confidence with the brush and oh. i mean yeah what do you say i i was blown away i was waiting for some kind of a punchline when meredith uh showed me these uh, they're absolutely amazing. Well, he's we first we, we talked talented. to his mom and we're like, oh, my gosh, is he's like his instructor's really good. And she's like, he just watches YouTube videos, yeah. mostly Bob Ross. And, and well, it's heavily influenced, obviously. But that's where you start. Yeah, he's certainly making the absolute most of it. It's oh my truly gosh. amazing. Yeah. So incredible. Yeah. Well done, Connor. Out. And I am looking forward to following your career because if that's what you're doing when you're 11, just yeah. keep ha and but keep having fun with it. Absolutely. Just have fun. So you see what we're all up against here. <laughs> <coughs> this is the next generation coming up. Yeah. And you what, thought you were an artist. Insane. Yeah. yeah, I remember drawing at that age. Um, I drew, you know, Charlie Brown. I, I had not developed at all as an artist at all. I was a late bloomer uh, for sure. And I didn't really start drawing seriously until I was 20. So I was, I was definitely a very late bloomer. Uh, bloomer. But, you know, um, that is truly, truly amazing. Yeah, it was it was pretty inc incredible. Just incredible. Somebody asked if I was going to do the golden costume for this. I am not. I'm going to do. It's a commission. So we're going to do the regular costume because they, if they wanted the golden costume, they would have asked. Yeah. And Meredith said, you need to get this one done. And I had already done the um, God of War version. So I thought, OK, well, I can I can do this one. And it won't be just drawn, you know. Kev Kevin Mandevil says, happy little trees for the win. <laughs> yeah. All right. I missed a couple super chats. So I got to scroll back up here. Well, while you do while that, we I, were chatting, I, I while we were chatting, I missed some super chats. I want to mention, uh, I've got a new tutorial coming out um, tomorrow and it's all about um, uh, negative shapes, negative. Yeah, negative, negative shapes, drawing with, with negative shapes. So it's just drawing with shadow, really. And so you don't draw any lighting. And so I, I did a few examples. I've got, I'm showing the whole video right now. But, you know, it's, no. anyway, and so, like, everything that I've got here is just drawn with shadow. And so I went through that and everything. So that is coming tomorrow. So there you go. And Connor and Tracy are in the stream tonight. They're oh, they are. Yeah, Leafy Lane Acres. That's their, that's the name of their farm. 
That's a great so, farm name too. It is. We speaking of farm names, I, I got to do the okay. I got to do the super chats. I'm going to talk about farms all day. Trenton Massey has a super chat for five dollars. Trenton says, "Hi, DNM. Thanks so much for doing that art review a while back. Your tips have helped me." Hi, Meredith. How's the cat? <laughs> well, I'll tell you how the cat is. Oh, this is. It would be a lot more helpful if it actually this actually worked, Dave. This it, doesn't work. What doesn't work? What's uh, not working? Hello, cat. Still alive. <laughs> That's so delayed. That would have been so much better. You're the one working the soundboard. The soundboard sucks. There are soundboard I need a new soundboard. Oh, I need a new soundboard. Right. The did the either that or the lotion on my hands makes the touch stream touch screen not work. All right. Next super chat comes from SES Powerlifting for five dollars. And thank you, Trenton, very much for yes, the super chat. Thank you very much. SES has a super chat saying says good evening, flock and finches. Let's do that drawing thing. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> Thank you so woo, much, woo. SES. This is going to be a fun one. I mean, I love drawing Wonder Woman, so <clears throat> it's All always right. a fun. Can, one. I hope you guys can hear the sound effects tonight. By the way, we don't have El Padrino Please let watching us know. tonight. No El Padrino. No El Padrino. He had to do some work, so he mm. came in and said he wasn't going to be here. Basically, <coughs> you know, ruin everyone's day and then left. Yeah, that's too bad. All right. So our next super chat comes from Jerry Rasco for ten dollars. Jerry says today was long, and I thought I'd be too tired to put in more hours at my drawing table, but I saw the stream was starting, and I have been re-energized. Thanks for bringing the inspiration and the energy. Well, that's great. Thank you so much. Thanks. So thanks, yeah, Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. And I hope drawing is going well for you tonight. I mean, it doesn't always, and that's that's just how it goes. Sometimes it really flows, and sometimes it doesn't. Hopefully it's it's going well. Wonder Woman's looking a little not the best. Make her look awesome. No I'm, pressure, but totally yeah, no pressure. pressure but... Jason Jones says my chickens were named Nugget. All <laughs> ten of my hens. <laughs> well, I guess that's easy when you want to call them. You just go out and go Nugget, Nugget. The oh, question yeah. is, is that what they ultimately became? Chicken Nuggets. All right. Wayne Blackman has a super chat for $10. Wayne says, good evening, guys. Happy to see you both. I wanted to, oh, I want to mention the sad news of the passing of artist Jean Paul Leon. I, Leon, is that right? Leon. Yeah. I want to know if you guys were acquainted with him and thank you both for the channel. And we did mention, maybe Wayne didn't, wasn't here yet. He was, uh, Jean Paul was the first person we talked about. Unfortunately, yeah. neither one of us got a chance to meet him. No, no, which is, you know, it's it's one of those. I never got to meet um, Jack Kirby. Jack Kirby was he passed away in '93, and I got into comics in '94. And I mean, I don't know that I would have been able to meet him anyway. You know, but uh, I was in Canada. I, there's just no way. I never got to meet Frank Frazetta. I never got to meet <clears throat> a long list of. I never got to meet John Buscema. You know, so I've met and gotten to know so many incredible artists, heroes of mine, and it's always a shame when. You know, somebody passes and I realize, you know, I missed my chance. You know, you're not going to not going to be able to go back. So um, Ian Co Connor says thank you to us. Oh, well, thank you, Connor. Thank you for the beautiful paintings, because we only showed two of the four he sent us. Yeah, there, um, were, there were more. Yeah, actually. Yeah. But I really wanted to be able to showcase each one properly, yeah. rather than saying here's one and here's one. And, you know, yeah. <clears throat> Ian Art says, hey, Dave, do you have any tips on balancing out the muscles in terms of size? You are my favorite artist and keep up the great content. Uh, well, thank you. Um, balancing out the muscles in terms of size. It's an interesting question. I, I would say the number one thing, the most important thing is to know your overall figure proportion. And so the length of your arms versus the length, like the length of your upper arm versus your lower arm, all those things have very, um, now in real life and in cartooning figures can really vary, but when it comes to a superhero figure, they have kind of standard proportions, generally speaking. And so learn that first. And then when you're sketching, you know, you'll, you'll sketch, you'll find, you know, I'm going to sketch an arm and you really start to, if you do it enough, get a, a pretty decent level of anatomy just kind of happening 
without really having to actually put any real drawing in there. There's, you know, some anatomy and some shape in there. And that kind of gives me enough that I know I've got a muscle here and I've got, you know, this muscle here. And that gives me my sizing. So if you know your anatomy, you know your proportions and you are really good with gesture drawing and you start to get to the point where you can sketch in a good figure shape, getting the actual muscle sizes will kind of just come naturally. It's not something I, I think that you really need to um, be overly concerned with in of itself. That's kind of my thinking. I feel like it's just in terms of approach, you want to think about it that way. And I'm going to be inking this picture, but I'm, I'm actually, I want to make sure the face works. So I'm just tightening the face. Right. Next super chat comes from Cody Farron. For $6.99. Thank you for the super chat, Cody. Yes, thank you. Cody says, hello, David and Meredith. Huge fan. I was wondering, when you rough out your 11 by 17 artboards, do you do several pages at once or one page at a time? I, I do uh, one page at a time. And I have done it before where I've, I've roughed out several at once. And that can actually, there are a lot of advantages to doing that. Um, but generally speaking, I have to turn in pages. And so I'm always under the gun. And so I'm all of my effort is really just focused on that next page that I have to turn in. So I end up just doing the layout, doing everything and turning that in. That's, that's really kind of my, my approach. So hold on. I need like an intro. I think the face is okay. What do hold you on. Think? I need intro. Okay. This is the best I've got. Oh, you know what? I need or maybe that. even this one would be better. Rough in her costume quickly. Super chat from Anthony G. Anthony is a $20 super chat. He says, hi, Finches and Finch Flock. Can't stick around long tonight because I'm at the hospital waiting for my first born to arrive. I need a baby sound. Wah, wah. That is great. Congratulations, Anthony. Have a great stream, David Maris, and I'm hoping to catch up next week. Yeah, well, well good luck on that one. It. Yeah, that but great news. Wah, wah. That's so exciting, really Anthony. Woohoo! Congratulations. I can't wait to hear if it's a boy, if it's a girl. Of course, if it's a boy, they're going to name it David. If it's, a, <laughs> yeah, right. if it's a girl, they're going to name it Meredith. <laughs> right. Make sure you spell it properly. You know, I mean, the middle name is fine if you want to do it like something Meredith. I'm okay with that too. That is freaking amazing. That so sure exciting. That's really great. May the 4th, that baby has to be born before midnight. Take the oxytocin. Right? Get it? No, I'm sorry. No. Because it's May the 4th today. How cool would it be to have your birthday be May the 4th? Oh, because, right. So take the oxytocin. Oh, my gosh. I... Somebody help me out here. I can nobody own, else knows what you're I talking can about. lead you know that saying you can lead a horse to water. Yeah, you know what? Everybody watching is going, What is she? That's, you know knows. why? Because it's a stream full of men. Yeah. Every woman in the world be like, take the oxytocin. And they yeah, would know what I was talking about. None of us have any idea. Freaking what you're men. Saying. Freaking men. Can't take us anywhere. Can't. You know what that what sound happened after I did that? No. All of you just sitting there listening to crickets. <sighs> I, it's pretty bad. You need to have sound effects <clears throat> so I don't have to tell you what sound effect I'm using. Oh, I need to be able to hear them? Yes. Yeah, no. It's all right. Especially when I play the buzzer. Yeah, the minute I put on headphones, that's what's going to happen. Mm. It actually sounds like those like mm -mm. alerts, like those that... Don't play it, please. I'm not going to, but the federal government alert. Yeah, I've got the, I don't know what I was thinking. I got the worst one I could find. You really did. Because I thought it'd be funny. It never thinking? occurred to me that you would just spam it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's totally spam it. Totally. But I'm not doing it tonight in honor of Anthony. All right. Erica Scott says, David Finch, we better get a mini tutorial, including either chickens or Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> chickens it is erica <laughs> chickens it is right <laughs> and then uh, two days you guys are like you're gonna get double dose of dave this week because on eric is reminding me moderator extraordinaire that this thursday may 6th tune in 
for a painting live stream with yeah. David. Where they will be going over Ariel Olivetti's process for painting in acrylic. I had a painting somewhere. I know it was on the floor this morning. I told you on the floor now. Do you see it? No. No, I don't. Oh, just sit down and draw. Oh, here it is. Where's my draw monkey draw? <laughs> you need the whip. That was. You do need the whip. There you go. So yeah, this is a painting that Eric and I did on um, uh, Saturday. We did this Saturday night. And it, well, Eric did his own painting. He did uh, Spider-Man this time, which came out great. Um, and we used the same technique that we did on uh, the first time and the technique that we're going to be using on Thursday. So it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a long stream, I think, <laughs> because painting takes a little bit longer. This is actually pretty quick. Quicker, uh, they uh, started at nine and you went to bed at two. Yeah, I went to bed. Yeah, so you know, now, I'm not gonna rest do... up the night before, people. Get your shed eye. I'm not going to do a full figure. It's going to be a torso, so that should help. Still, yeah, it's going to be a certain amount of time, but I think we'll get a lot out of it, hopefully. And uh, also, I, I figure, you know, if you're watching, and um, you know, life kind of intervenes, well, it'll be up later on too. So it's not like. All right. Third has a super chat for five euros. Thank you so much for the super chat, Third, and welcome to the stream. Third says, big fan. I was just wondering who are your art parents or the artists who influenced your style? Thank you. Uh, and yeah, thank you very much. Um, my art parents, that's a good term for it, are Mark Silvestri, number one. Uh, not only was he my favorite artist when I wanted to get into comics, he was also my first boss. I, I think because he was such a big influence, it made me a good fit for Top Cow. Um, and he was my biggest teacher over the years. Uh, he taught me, well, in the early years, he taught me so much. All of the stuff that I'm going to show tomorrow, one of his biggest lessons was negative space. It's something he used incredibly well and something he drilled into all of us because it was so effective. And so that's really the basis for the, for tomorrow's tutorial. Um uh, my other big influences now in terms of people that have really helped Matt Banning was a huge help for me. He really kind of, you know, kept me from losing my mind early on. I'm sure you guys know what it's like when, you know, you really start worrying about, you know, how's your art coming along and are you going to make it? Where are you going to be? And it's the stress that you go through. And this is when I was working professionally. This is, it was worse before I got in, but there were times I just wanted to quit. And Matt really kind of kept me going, um, gave me some really good advice. So I'm always deeply, deeply thankful and in debt to Matt Banning. Uh, Bat, he's uh, an inker, so you might know him by Bat. Um, in terms of my influences, yeah, Mark Silvestri, Simon Bisley, you can see that in that painting. I I've been trying to paint like Simon Bisley for years and years. Um, uh, um, Kevin Nolan, Mike Mignola, Frank Frazetta, uh, both Cuba brothers, um, Jim Lee, all of the the image guys, uh, Rob Liefeld, um, and then I've I've gone through times over the years. Dale Keown is a huge one, uh, very big. Travis Trust, I'm, I can do this all day. Uh, and then I went through a, a later period where I got into a lot of manga. Um, and yeah, it's it's you know evolved over the years. But those are the big ones. Certainly, we had a car on. crash. You're gonna have to stop now. <laughs> okay, I'll stop. All right. I guess that puts it back to me, though. Uh, yeah, you should just let me go. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Other Minds has a super chat for $19.41. Wow, thank you very much, Other Minds. I really appreciate it. Other Minds says, Howdy, Dave and Murdoch. Have you seen the latest J. Scott Campbell controversy? Da Dave, you strike me as the kind of guy that wouldn't respond to that nonsense. But have you ever been tempted? No. Do you no. know what he's look talking about? I don't know. Here, I, I do know. Oh, you do? Okay, well, uh, let me just say, first of all, not knowing. And I don't want to know. I don't want to talk about it. I know that uh, J. Scott Campbell, I've known him for years and years. I mean, I, he was one of the very first people that I, I met in 94. I'm, I'm going to tell you about it because somebody redrew a picture of his. He had a picture of Mary Jane yeah. sitting on the couch. I she, know the picture. Yeah, I know what you're talking about then. Somebody redrew it yep. and desexualized it. Uh, oh, okay. And made it more, 
I'm going to I'm going to use air quotes around the term appropriate for today. Okay, got it. So, all right. But you don't do that to people's artwork. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, you, you don't have to support somebody's artwork if you don't agree with it. But nobody's going around putting drapery over Michelangelo's David. Uh, you know, people, there are people that have wanted to do that in the past and they've so never they're, been fair enough. my favorites that, you know, <coughs> people coming from there. So, yeah, look, I don't want to talk about politics. We're not going to talk politics. Or, or any kind of a controversy at all. The only thing I'm going to say is that Jeff Campbell is a very good friend, uh, a great person. And another person, by the way, who's incredibly helpful to me. Yeah, and just everybody's just and you know trying he's, to do he's a respectful their person. Like yeah. you know, this is not somebody that goes, but just trying to do right now, their job yeah. to the best of their ability. And we're going to move on from there to a super chat from Chris Newmayer for five euros. Thank you so much for the super chat, Chris. Chris says hi from France or bonjour. I threw in the bonjour, not him. Usually I can't watch the Monday draw sessions because it's too late here, but Wednesday's a day off. So here I am. Cheers. That's great. Maybe Chris is British. He said cheers. Maybe he's a Brit living in France. But welcome to the welcome to Monday on Tuesday, Chris. <laughs> Monday on Tuesday. See, sometimes it works out for everyone. Yeah, well. Amateur artist says Meredith, my grandpa's birthday is on May the 4th. So congratulate to him. Yeah. Happy great. birthday. Amateur artist, <laughs> Grandpa, father. and Bill Sankiewicz yesterday, oh, and hi. I'm in de, de, from it's like Defreitas. I think that's how it, you pronounce it, because they were yesterday. So happy birthday, all you people! I like Nick from Detroit. From Detroit, may the horse be with you. <laughs> that's my favorite day, Nick. My favorite day. Uh, one brown hornet one. As a super chat for five dollars, lots of new people super chatting tonight. Dave, how do you submit for Marvel? Stormbreakers is for the people already working. I met you in Colorado back when Image was touring. <coughs> Long time ago. <coughs> um, uh, submitting for Marvel is not something that you can just do online right now that I'm aware of. That you used to be able to, and I have rejection letters to prove it. Uh, I do think that. Well, I'm sure there are people that got work through submitting through uh, through Marvel. It's a highly, highly unusual thing. And I don't know that not being able to just submit your work is really um, much of a uh, um, a huge negative just because it was it was such a difficult way to ever get noticed in the first place. Um, the best way and this will come again this year. I mean, we're all coming back. This is going to be our year. Mm -hmm. We'll be able to go to conventions. That's where I got my work. That's where I got all of the interest. Any interest that I ever got in my uh, comic art was all from conventions. Uh, New York Comic Con is already like they're going. Yeah. So, so conventions. Now, that doesn't help those of you that are in Brazil. And that's a lot of people. Those of you that are in Europe, there are conventions there. It is much more difficult to find an editor because that's really what you want. You want to find people that can offer you work now it's great to talk to artists that can give you advice and i did that as much as i possibly could i got some incredibly good advice and it was very very helpful i was never able to get work from marvel or dc well i got work from image um so i i managed to talk to um a few editors and uh, they were very gracious it didn't work out i didn't manage to get work and actually you know the nice thing is i was able to her neck is weird. I was able to thank them, you know, years later and say, hey, you know what? While I didn't get work from it, um, they were they were very supportive and I really appreciated the feedback that I got. And, you know, so it's so nice to actually meet people in a professional capacity years later and be able to say that. So, yeah, appreciate it. <laughs> so, yeah, conventions are the best way. The next best way is uh, Instagram. Putting your stuff out on Instagram, if you can get a following of people that that love your work and uh, appreciate it on there. Now, Instagram's a different game, right? Because you're not putting storytelling; you're putting pinup images. Regardless, and as as much as that's not the most ideal thing, if you can work on your storytelling but do the kind of work that people get excited about on Instagram, uh, people will notice, and that's that's certainly a, a way. Um, DeviantArt is another one uh, that's a little tougher. Facebook. Uh, Meredith has hired artists from Facebook. I don't know that you could get work at Marvel or DC doing that, 
The thing is, though, Meredith has had a real problem. I shouldn't say it that way. Um, she hires an artist to work on projects. I have a lot of problems. She has a lot of problems. Yeah. Well, I she mean, hires... which real problem are we talking about? Right. <laughs> In this particular instance, she has problems hiring artists that eventually end up going and getting work at Marvel or DC or both. And so she loses them. I have so, a real problem hiring quality. She hires she hires very, very good I artists. I hire the best. And, you know, the great thing is Marvel and DC, those guys are there, busy, busy. And they have uh, big Rolodexes full of people to, to look through before they ever have to look outside, which is why it's so difficult. So, you know, Meredith gets uh, artists and they end up getting some attention because of the, the book is out there. It does pretty well and they get snapped <laughs> up. So I, I definitely say, I would say, a, you know, a great way a is great to create our own project. Yeah. Find a, a creator own project. Find a writer that's serious that can pay. Don't work for free if you can help it. And, um, you know, that's that's another great way. Uh, and the good news is that while getting work in the first place is never a guarantee of continued work, it is a guarantee that you are now a professional and you now are going to be always regarded as a professional. And that really, really helps establish your credibility when you're looking for work. All right, I'm going to start using that car crash button a lot. I saw that Nick Rucci is here, you know? Like I saw is it Nick here? Up. Yeah. I'll have to look for, I'll look through the, the, the chat. But I have to read a super chat right now from Honest Battler because it's very important. It was okay. for $4.99. Anthony, if it's a girl, name it Mary Beth. <laughs> or somebody said Mary Death. Mary Death. <laughs> Perfect. People are just messing with me now. Yeah. Mary Beth. Mary Beth. That's what my bus driver used to call me when I was five. Yeah, you know what? I'd, I'd get on the bus. Trouble. My cousin, her name, uh, she passed away, unfortunately. It's been quite a few years now. She passed away 12 years ago. She passed away ago. the year Isaac was born. Yeah, but uh, her name was Meredith. So I, I knew the name, but I still couldn't spell it. So <laughs> there's actually graffiti of Meredith's name in an issue of... Spelt wrong? Spelt wrong in an issue of uh, Moon Knight. I think it's Moon Knight issue three, maybe two. I'm not, anyway, it's on a wall. It says Meredith. M E R I D E T H. You'd think somebody would spell check. The internet was around back then. Hey, I wrote your name in a comic. What do you want? You wrote my name in a comic. And I don't even think you told me. No, I don't think I did. I was just, Which is, I liked you. Yeah, like you, you right. like me. You like me. You really, really like me. Just so you know, people can't wait for the painting stream. Kevin Man Devil. It's going to be Kenny, a Kenny Wang says that painting you did, Dave, is way too cool. Thank you, Kenny. Charles Petri thinks that on Thursday you should paint a chicken welding a lightsaber. <laughs> I'm painting Captain America, and I'm doing that. Uh, and I, by the way, I, I really I keep I keep forgetting to mention the painting stream is 100 percent entirely based on us looking at uh, Ariel, Ariel Olivetti's um, course on painting that you can find. It's on uh, which answers Angelina Tang's question when you guys do that painting, which was what medium did he use to paint? Acrylic. It's acrylic and colored pencil. All right. One um, mighty R. Maybe Eric knows. What? Where are you? Domestica. Thank you, 81 Modus. It's on Domestica. It is incredible. Uh, he's a phenomenal painter. And he's a great guy. I've only met him. I talked about this. I only met him once before. Uh, I would love the opportunity to be able to talk to him a little bit more. Um, he... Uh, he has it all in Spanish. And actually, Domestica, when you go there, it's in Spanish, too. So it can be a little bit difficult. I actually managed to navigate through not speaking a single word. I just kind of guessed, and it all worked out fine. And it's subtitled. So, you know. And uh, no, I am not, you know, an affiliate or, or whatever. I have no connection to it. So I, I don't want you to think I'm just trying to, you know, promote We make whatever. no money. No. no. We make no money by but promoting that video. I've been waiting for a video like that. for and That reminds me, actually. Uh, Jeff Maricola knows who I am. I don't know who that is. Jeff Maricola is an incredible fantasy painter. He. Um, How do you know that he knows who you are? Because he responded to me on Instagram. So <laughs> I don't know if that counts, but whatever I'm taking That doesn't it. count. <laughs> He's a great fantasy painter. He's done a whole lot of Magic the Gathering stuff. And he has a YouTube channel, which you guys did, should really check out. He did does... you say something to him on Instagram? Yeah. I've bought his videos before. He's he has. Uh, speaking of videos for sale, he has videos for sale also that you can buy. He's got oil painting and acrylic, and they're all really, really good. Um, you can check out. It's Jeff Jeff Maricola, 
I don't know that, but anyway, it's on YouTube. He's got a great channel and he's just, you know, he's very entertaining to watch. I just really enjoy his stuff. So I thought it was very cool that he responded to me. So there you go. <laughs> You're so funny. One Mighty R has a super chat for $5. Mighty wants to say hi. Awesome stream. Is merch coming soon? Oh, that's Mar you, Meredith. I know. You know what? Here's the problem. I've been farming. You know what? We need to take it out of Meredith's hands. Was... I've been farming, farming, farming. Is Old McDonald's not copyright, is it? Old McMeredith had a farm. E-I-E-I-O. And on that farm, she had a horse. Okay, okay. E-I-E-I-O with a... Don't we all wish it was copyrighted? Here, now? Anna. Okay, okay. Wait, I got to get one more time. There. That, what other purpose could I use the horse name for? And here I'm like, oh, you know, I'll give you a horse. You'll love it. That's so nice. Of course I do. We have to come up with a name for our farm. Yes. I was going to ask the flock. Okay. To come up with a name. for It has to be, okay. It would be awesome if it was something faith-based. Because I just feel like our farm and everything that we have is a gift from God and a blessing. So. So there you go. There's the criteria. That's the criteria. I, other than that, it's all up to you guys. I'm going to say that three quarters of the commissions that I draw are somebody standing on rocks, <laughs> pretty much. Because I like can draw them rocks. fast. And look at that, no feet. I draw feet sometimes. Hey, you know, sometimes. Happened. Sometimes I'm give her a feet. pillar, though. This is Wonder Woman. She needs a pillar. Yeah, not a rock, a pillar. Make it a broken pillar. It is. Honest Badler has a super chat for three ninety nine. Honest Badler says, Dave, in your email, names for your guy? Missin Blight. M I S A N. Missin Blight. Not bad. Yeah. We we did decide to go with Blight with a Y, which is the height of creativity right there. <laughs> it is Blight. With why a don't y. you just do instead of G H T, why don't you just do B L Y T? B L Y T E. Yeah. Well, you could have done B L Y G H T. Oh, yeah, no. No, we're doing. Light with a Y. B, anyway. Oh, dear. And there, uh, there's some point I want to do like a a few page story with him painted. And it's not going to have any words or any kind of actual story. It's just going to be him killing stuff. <laughs> so, awesome. I I'll write. I didn't that. even. I'll, Dave, will, Dave will just draw it and I'll just have to like script it after the fact. All right. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Scrolling down. Nick Barucci is here. I told you. Has a super chat for 100 buckaroonos. Holy crap. Nick oh, says, wow. Dave's one of the sweetest talented artists. It's been a bit. Hi, Dave and Meredith. Dave doesn't stop for car crashes. Because <laughs> you <laughs> could have crashed. <laughs> Miss you guys. Congrats on 140,000 subscribers. Oh, thank you is so much. Is that where you're at? Yeah, 140. We hit 140, which That is means our 150,000 stream giveaway is right around the corner it's coming up yeah it's coming crazy 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 yeah, thank you so much nick i really appreciate it by the way nick i is have... also one of the sweetest he really most is. awesome hardest working people in comics yes uh i have a a, a huge box two box three three boxes uh, three boxes of stuff of stuff i think from... i have an email f f in my inbox today of like can you get that out to us? And so, yeah, that's coming up. That's something I'm going to be doing this week is getting those signed, getting everything together. We've got posters and we got books and a bunch of different stuff for all the, from the Red Sonia Kickstarter. Yeah, for I, I'm sure a lot of you guys remember <laughs> we did the Red Sonia uh, Indiegogo campaign uh, a few months ago. And so, yeah, it's it's all ready to go. And I've got the stuff here. And so, yeah, pumped about that. All right. Next super chat comes from Kelvin Gordon for four nine nine. Kelvin says, "Hey Finches, I made it to the stream. Did you guys see Mortal Kombat? And what did you think? We've not seen Mortal Kombat. That being said, we have seen King Kong. We have King Kong versus Godzilla. It actually made me a more of a Godzilla fan than King Kong right now, which I never would have thought would be possible. But uh, you still like King Kong more? Yeah, that's fine. But he looks so good. It was so well he done. He was." But he's, he's no personality. Right. Like King Kong has a personality. Yeah, right? but he was, he was awesome. I still love King Kong more. All right, fair enough. King Kong, Team Kong. 
It's factions now. Yeah, I'm on Team Kong. We can no longer communicate. Uh, mm -hmm. Chow Huynh has a super chat for $10. Hi, Dave and Meredith. Hope all is well. Dave, who are your top three favorite female comics, female characters in comics to draw, excluding Wonder Woman? Oh, okay. It's making it a little tougher. Okay, so. Because we all know Wonder Woman's number one. Uh, Black Cat, number two. Oh, maybe yeah. even number one. And I have not drawn Black Cat on we here have yet. haven't in a while. Um, or maybe, have I? I don't think so. Uh, so, okay, Black Cat. Then Rogue, a character I know I have not drawn on here, and I, that's definitely got to come, and uh, Catwoman. Magic. Oh, in magic. Can I sit? Can I pick four? She's so cool. She's very, very cool. Yeah. She's the coolest. She's my favorite. Magic. Character. Okay. Yeah. Oh. She's my favorite. But I really like Catwoman. But I like the like. I have to be honest. I like the the statue that you did version of magic. Like the right. Well, I didn't do the statue, but I. But it's no, based like, on the cover. Yeah, I like that version. I, I'm not sure I love the modernized version as much. Fair enough. <clears throat> Kevin Mandevil has a super chat for nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Kevin says, "David, have you had the chance to check out Barry Windsor Smith's new book, Monsters? Whoa, definitely worth checking out." And Meredith, are you writing anything new currently? I am writing something. Trying to write something. I'm literally not even ahead of Colin at this point. I don't know how many pages Colin's working on. I turned him five pages and that I, that's all the five pages I have done so far. I need to get working. He's going to be like, hey, Meredith, uh, ready for more script. And I'm going to be like, hey, Colin, I need to write some. You even know where you're going now? You have a general idea. Yeah, yeah, I do. I know, what, I know where I'm going, but I just have to like. The thing is, I'm doing another biblical adaptation. And it's really important to me that I'm in the right headspace to do that and give it the time and the intention and, and the thought and the prayer that, yeah. that um, I feel like it deserves. So, so hopefully now that, you know, I got one more pony to get over here this weekend, hopefully, and then I can just kind of like things are running. You've been saying that for so long. But I no, but things are running. Thing to do, Come on, man, things are be, running more. Things are running more. They are running just, more. Just one thing. And then, just one more thing. Oh, no. Then, yeah. That's that's life on the farm. That's why, like, I'm never bored. I, ba I bailed, Don't you notice I'm never bored? I bailed hay yesterday. You didn't bail hay. Whatever. You I had to move hay. You moved. You stacked hay. I stacked hay. Yeah, it was a lot. That was Sunday. Sunday. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, we got so much going on. Sunday. Yeah, I had to stack hay. Yeah. Fun times. Our entire garage full of hay. It's true. We have a three car garage and there's no cars in it. It's, it's become the hay barn until my barn gets built. Can't believe it. So, uh, somebody wants to know. I'm, I missed it. What kind of camera it is that you have? That's a, that's you're drawing. That's above you. This one here is a Brio. It's a Logitech Brio 4K. It's a great camera. The downside is this right there. So that's that's the one thing about it is it um, it's on my desk and so it jiggles. I need to at some point. Uh, I saw Robert Marzullo has got a a great setup where he's got it. Um, his his camera is suspended above the desk, so it's not jiggling a lot. Which I, anyway, at some point I'll get there. Not today, but that's what I've got right now. So the camera itself is great. It's it's more the the um the placement and you know what here i'm going to show you guys just so you can really you can kind of see the arm that it's on but yeah i've just got it on one of these things here just on a little stand and it's plunked down on the desk and that's all it is so it's it's a very very simple setup um and i really thought okay i'll get this set up and uh if i don't quit doing youtube because i quit everything a lot uh then i'll we get are, something better are we at a year yet are we at, mm, when are we at a year uh, it's gotta of, be the end of may it, I was going to say it's got to be coming up soon. Yeah, so, yeah. How I, cool would it be if we did 150,000 subscribers and the one year anniversary stream all at the cool. same time? We're not going to get there, though. That's Balloons and parties. Oh, my gosh. It'd be awesome. I had to read this. Nick, we were talking about people that I work with and artists that I work with. Nick's so lovely. Nick Brucci says, Meredith does work with incredible talent. She helped make Xena a, high, a great series and a high watermark for us. So sweet. Yeah. Yeah, who'd you work with on Xena? He was very, very good. Um, oh, um, 
Why are you going to do that to oh, me? So Vicente. Sorry. Vicente. That's yes. right. Yeah. Vicente. Great. I, I, I'm going to butcher his last name. Quifentes. 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 Yeah. I could spell it. Not hundred only days. was he a very good artist, but he was also, uh, you know, there were a huge Xena fan because, it, like, you know, and I've gone through this. He started a new series and there are, you know, things, it's kind of working things out. And he was so great to work with with that stuff. Like, all the way around. Yeah. And he's a huge Xena fan. It's always yeah. fun to work with people who are fans of the characters. So. Do, 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 do. I'm just scrolling through. Um, oh, Charles Petri says on our 200,000 subscriber special, we should have you draw all the pets, every <laughs> animal on the farm wielding a different color of lightsaber. <laughs> Maybe an uh, eight-page special. We might have more than eight pets by then. Oh With five God. chickens, two horses, two dogs, and a cat, we're well over eight. That's okay. ten right there. So what a control. This is how it happens. <laughs> Charles, uh, I'll take that under advisement. <laughs> that means no. <laughs> the Friendly Fram. Holy Mother's Farmers. Finch Corners. In Finch, we trust the no feet, no feet ranch. <laughs> no feet ranch. Is that Jeff Wheeler? Uh, Jasmar Studios. Ah, oh, there you go. Yeah. No feet farm. I love actually, that. that's actually kind of really it's great. Good. Except anybody driving by, I go what? No, no feet farm. <laughs> Iron Horse Hill. I like that. That's pretty good. That Iron Horse great. Hill. Man, that sounds like a motorcycle shop. I love it. Mare's mic is way louder than Dave's. Dave, turn my mic. Am I number two? Yes. You turn my mic way up. Yeah, you have yours closer to your face. So and I also, because I'm shouting. I'm, oh. I'm, I'm a projector. Yeah. I'm, are you complaining? ARG? You'll be banned from the chat. <laughs> okay. Just kidding. All right. Rohan Scar has a super chat for $7.99. <coughs> now I have to cough. Rohan says, thanks for drawing on a day I can watch. Love you guys and love the tutorials. Thanks so much for the super chat, Rohan. Yeah, thank you very much, Rohan. And I'm glad that it's a... Now, um, for those of you that, that were here Monday and, and we weren't here, I tried to say that we would, but I, I know that... Excuse me. I really try not to miss because I know that's going to happen. So yeah, apologies for that. But, you know, uh, there are some people that they can't do Monday. So, you know, it's it's nice to at least have a day that maybe uh, a few people can can spend some time with us that normally couldn't. Yeah, it is kind of nice. Edward Lee has a super chat for $12. Edward says, hi, Dave and Meredith. Dave, can you help show how to draw our really compressed chest the Marvel way? I think it's so cool when artists like Frank Miller do it, but can't figure it out. A compressed chest, the Marvel way. I'm not sure what that means. I'm so sorry. I don't know what a compressed, what you mean by a compressed chest. Like crunched over like this. Is that compressed? I Expanded, can... compressed. I'll Google it. I'll Google it and see if we can figure it out. Okay. We're going to work on this. Steve Carruthers has a super chat for $2. Steve's suggestion for the farm is Bethel Ranch. Or um, Mishkin, which is Hebrew, and Naus, which is Greek. Those are good ideas. They too. really are. I kind of like that. Yeah. Bethel Ranch. That sounds that sounds very nice, actually. I mean, I still like my Iron Horse Hill. Iron Horse Hill. We don't even have a hill. I don't care. I like No Feet Farm. <laughs> <laughs> no Feet Farm. No Feet Farm. No Farm, No Feet. All right, I'm looking up how to draw chest compressed chest the mar the Marvel way, and while I do that, I'm going to read Rick Bulo's super chat for a hundred DKK. I don't know what that is, DKK. I don't know what the currency is. But thank you. But thank you, Rick. Hi, David and Merit. Just want to hear your thoughts on artists deciding to fix pro artist pieces without consent. Just happened to see J. Scott Campbell recently. The J. Scott Campbell. Thing. Oh right, yeah. You know what? Uh, I know Meredith, you said that that's something that, you know, somebody shouldn't do. Look, uh, you put your work out there as a professional. Um, it's it's not yours anymore. So if somebody wants to go ahead and do that, I don't think that that's a problem. You know, 
uh, this stuff belongs to um, fans of the medium and it's fans of the medium that that keep us doing what we're doing. So, you know, I would love it if everything that I did, everybody went, wow, that's the best. That's not always going to happen. And when that happens, it can it hurts, truthfully. I mean, I, I've I've definitely done some things where, you know, it hasn't gone over and it, it can be a little um, tough to to take. Oh, I kind of screwed up her face. I'm going to have to fix it. Darn it. Um, but yeah, no. Do I have a problem with that? No, I don't. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, the politics and, and that kind of thing, that's just where things are right now. And I steer clear of that. I can't find anything. Um, so what I would say to um, Edward is, do you have an example of what you mean by compressing the chest? Like, a, what do you mean? It, our, Eric will look for it. Just like put my name in orange and I'll watch for it. So they don't have to super chat again. Uh, another super chat from Nick Barucci for a hundred dollars again. Oh, Nick, Nick, you're ridiculous, Nick. We love you. You don't have to do that. Nick says, I got to go. But before I do, I want to say that I agree. Meredith only works with great talent and created one of the best Xena series we've ever published. If you guys need giveaways for 150,000 subscribers, happy to don donate. You're great to the fans and bring joy to all. Well, how great is that? Well, thank that's you so awesome. Much, Nick. Thank really. you so much, Nick. That means people are getting Xena comics. That's right. Well, that's great. Yeah. You know, maybe some Red Sonia. It's very exciting. That is. Yeah. I mean, we always have a bunch of stuff to donate here, and I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, some some of the, the stuff from from Dynamite. I mean, that that's the whole awesome. line is incredible. And uh I yeah, I think that's that's very, very cool. Very much appreciated, Nick. Thank you so much. And thank you for coming. We love Nick. He's yeah. the best. Back to farm names. Jason Jones, Divine Finch Farm. <laughs> yeah, our 17-year-old would not agree with that right now. Hold on to the Iron Rod Farm. I don't know what that means. Iron Rod. Hold on, hold on. My screen blipped on me. <clears throat> Meredith, Henry Jeremek, when are we going to see the first volume of Dave and Meredith's Monday Night Draw season one? When we have a full season. Yeah, we're almost there. Yeah, we're almost there. We'll get a little, we'll add that to the list of things we're supposed to do. Yep. We need a whiteboard. Where's your whiteboard? I never bought it for you. That's where it is. <laughs> you never got it. Yeah. <laughs> Immaculate Imagination Farms. Kevin Mandevil. <laughs> Uh, Greg Al Static Art has a super chat for five dollars. Hey, Dean M. Sorry, I haven't been able to super chat as much as I'd like. Dave, can you help with the structure and muscles of lower arms? Okay, so and thank you, Greg. Um, and so basically, the lower arm you got this is the overall shape, and it, the, the wrist is here. You got your hand here. Uh, my upper arms here. Now, the actual structure is not that difficult. The thing that makes it so difficult is really giving, making it look uh, cool and kind of dynamic in a comic and really kind of hold together. So you've got an overall big muscle just right here. Takes on that kind of a shape. And then you have a bone right here your larger uh, elbow bone here and you've got a muscle that comes out from under here and wraps up here and then your thumb extensors come in and attach under that basically like that and then you've got a much larger muscle that comes in here and extends to the fingers you've got a bone here and so your elbow attaches into here then you've got some more muscle here and that's basically your bone structure it's very simple uh and i can tell you from trying to learn the muscles of the back i've been struggling with it for some reason i cannot keep it in my head and i've i've been working on that lately trying to just hammer it into my memory you'd think after this many years um but i still struggle with it so i know this can be hard to to you know do 
consistently all the time, but the way to do it is just do more and more and more anyway. So from here, the way that it really looks good though is very much negative space drawing, which we're going to be talking about in five minutes because my book of the week really kind of covers that and uh, tomorrow's tutorial, but I'm going to just draw the shadows. And so I'm going to light it from here, <sighs> draw an arrow properly. And, and so I've got a, a shadow under this muscle here and I've got a muscle coming up from it. So I'm going to duck under that muscle there. And then I've got my kind of bone here, my elbow here. And now I've got a muscle here, it gets thicker toward the middle. Plus there's a connection in here. So I'm going to kind of come out to a bit of a point in there. This connects in here. And then this is going to be shadowed out quite a bit more because it's at the back of the arm. So I'm really just going to throw in a bunch of shadow. And it's really about getting those kind of connections working well and giving them the making sure that your your muscles are nicely defined with those shadow shapes. And that's really what makes the difference between an arm that that really looks good and an arm that kind of doesn't hold together is just getting those those shapes. And then from there, you can add in, you know, more muscles and different striations. And, you know, I can put in a muscle here and I don't even know if it goes there, but it doesn't matter because I'm using the same kind of technique and just adding in more stuff, you know. So I can actually be fairly creative with that. And it, as long as my connections kind of work and I'm not contradicting things uh, too heavily, like I, I'm not drawing you know, crazy muscle shapes in there, it, it reads as, as being uh, pretty real. So that's how I always approach it. My, my musculature for this kind of, for my lower arms is not necessarily always 100% exactly accurate. <clears throat> but I make sure that I'm using shadows that, that conform to my shapes. All right. Next super chat comes from David Sampson for $2. David says, hi, Dave. Just started watching your tutorials and I love them from one artist, David, to another. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, David. And I have some more suggestions for the Finch Farm. Okay. Jason Jones has a farm name of 4F. Finding Faith Finch Farm. Kind of like that. Yeah. Erica Scott strength and shield ranch That's or good. sam kutcher the ca catastrophe catas catastrophic sorry cat astrophic <laughs> ranch oh. catastrophic farm that's awesome uh trinity ranch says erica scott wait i've got a great name trinity ranch that's a good name too that really is yeah oh it's denmark ddk denmark dollars thank you manuel jonathan uh, Edward Lee has a super chat for a dollar. I don't see a comment from Edward. Edward, oh, I meant an, an there it is. I meant an anatomically incorrect chest that's way too small but looks great. Oh, uh, you know what? I know what you mean. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. So when you say anatomically incorrect, I, I I'm gonna say what you now. This is an assumption. So here's my chest shape, and this is how I always do it. Uh, I've got my overall shape like this, just, you know, in simple terms, my chest kind of here. There you go. And then below it, I've got my big rib cage, which you really don't see on people. What you really see is, um, let me just erase it. What you're more likely to see on a person is Here's your center line for your stomach, my outer stomach. And so let me draw in my stomach muscles. And the top of the stomach also reads like uh, stomach muscles generally. And it goes pretty much up to the chest. And then you'll have your your ribs here. And so it's much more flat. And you'll see this with Frazetta. Uh, it, it's, it's more of a realistic kind of a way to draw the whole chest area. And I made the decision because I like the artists like for that or, or like um, Frank Miller that do kind of more of that <clears throat> uh, uh, kind of barrel shaped chest with that big kind of it's like a plate almost the way that Jim Lee draws it. 
it's like this kind of big plate shape and it just has a great uh transition because this all curves away from the light and so it just gives it like a really good feel of volume very easily so uh that's why i draw it that way and that's how i approach it now i will say look at conor mcgregor conor mcgregor has a very very short peck it's very very short unusually short and then you'll see people that have a very very long peck and it's similar with muscles uh you can't see my arm but some people have very short muscles and long tendons and some people have much longer muscles everybody's different and so it's not necessarily actually really all that incorrect to have a very short kind of a chest um Here's my my arm, and it's actually even extending below the chest. And Conor McGregor is kind of like that physically. His chest would be much more like that. So, uh, you know, the difference really is just, you know, if I drew a chest that's much larger, it would just be more like this. And then drawing a chest that's much bigger like this, I would be probably really well off to not draw that big uh, rib cage underneath it because that would really be kind of blocked by the chest. So you would see more of the stomach going all the way up the way that I did originally here. So that's really kind of the, the difference. And you you kind of make a choice with your figures. I mean, if you really, really have the ability, you can do different figures different ways because there are different shapes of people out there. I find, generally speaking for comics, um, you'll find ways that, that you do your anatomy, it becomes part of your style, and you pretty much always do it the same way. So, you know, you can pick one and and uh, yeah, that's that's really all there is to it. it it's something it's it's not an unusual question because it is not anatomically correct and not something you're going to find in an anatomy book and not something you're going to find drawing from life and so it causes you know some kind of concern that hey this is not really right well it's not but it looks cool and um you have to decide the kind of artist you want to be i wanted to be the kind of artist who's doing stuff that looks cool i didn't care if it was right so i mean i, I did to a certain extent but it's you know i i tended to lean more toward I wanted to do stylistically the kind of work that the artists that were doing uh, that I really loved were, were doing, which is why when I paint, I always just want to paint like Simon Bisley. All right. I want to paint right. No. I want to paint like Simon Bisley. Sorry, wrong button. Always book of the week. All right, here we go. Okay, so this is Secret Origins number 39. I don't have the cover. I haven't had the cover for years. You can tell this this is uh, not in the best shape. It's uh, It came out in 1989. Uh, this is Kevin Nolan, who you guys know is one of my all-time absolute favorites. And this is a really interesting period for Kevin Nolan because he was looking at some of, of what uh, Mike McNola was doing. He had actually just inked or was, I, I don't know, but this is around the time that he inked a story from Mike McNola. And he started picking up that kind of a look in his own work. And so it's it's Kevin Nolan art, and it really stands out as Kevin Nolan art. But there's no rendering anywhere. It's a more blocky kind of a style. It's very, very interesting. And I picked this this week because I'm a huge Kevin Nolan fan, and I figured chances are you guys wouldn't have seen this one. But also because it really uses negative space incredibly, incredibly well. Uh, you can see this whole figure here. You've got a few lines here and there, but it's it's really just drawn with shadow. All of this is just shadow. Uh, there's some really great examples. Um, this panel here, the way that he did these trees, it's all just drawing shadow shapes. There are no actual trees there. He hasn't drawn a single line. He's just drawing shadows from the trees and creating the trees just using shadow shapes. Really, really beautifully done. And it's, it's a very cool style interesting choice from the the colorist it kind of looks a little odd the way that it's done it looks like you've got this cave and then the trees are kind of attached to it which is i'm sure not what he intended but uh i think in black and white this really would have worked very very well um and unfortunately this one's a bit of a short story so there's there's not as much to it you can see some really great negative space stuff here and uh, panels like this are always incredible to me. The whole panel is is just done as a black and white silhouette. It works even without this. But then he's put a spotlight on the figures and you just see their feet. It keeps it kind of mysterious. It's just a beautiful panel. 
Uh, I've gotten so many ideas from from this book here. The same thing with the trees here. This whole figure is really done that way. If this is Frank Miller, it would really just be the shadows. You really and you can see actually he has broken up the line here. There's no line, so the colorist has completed that line, but it's not actually in the art at all. And the hands are done that way too. It's just shadowing. So it's a very interesting book for me just to see him, you know, really experimenting and trying something different, really very different for, for Kevin Nolan. I've never seen another book from him that's quite like this. So it's always one of my absolute favorites. Very, very well done. Uh, this is a book that made me uh, more of a fan of Batman. I got this one actually when I was <clears throat> working for Image and... Uh, I was looking at this a lot when I was working at Marvel, and it really made me want to go and do Batman at DC. Just, you know, I really wanted to do Man, uh, Man Bat, something I really never got much of a chance to do. I drew him, but not much, unfortunately. But, uh, and this kind of thing with the hands, you can see he's got a vein there, but it's just drawn just by drawing the shadows around it. Uh, that's something that I've always really tried to pick up in my own art is, is like this kind of detail on the hands incredibly well done he's not drawing all those tendons he's just drawing the indications of shadows and it makes it very very effective so uh negative space is something that that just has so many uses all over the place in backgrounds on figures um and especially you know an artist that that can use it like this where it's a tool but it's not a religion you know i i find now Frank Miller really took it, you know, all the way and that's what he did and it was beautiful. So I wouldn't want to take away from that obviously at all, but I think there are times when artists can take a technique and just put it everywhere at the detriment of of the art itself. So, you know, it's it's great when an artist takes something really interesting like that, incorporates it in their work and you get something really cool. Like look at that cape. It's just shadows and you can kind of see where all those shapes go just touched in there with shadows. Beautifully done. So, and here's a great example of him doing a forearm, the kind of lighting that I really like to do. And you can see where I get a lot of this stuff. Kevin Nolan, um, Kelly Jones is, is another one that I look at for that kind of thing. So yeah, there you go. And uh, a lot of really cool pages. Unfortunately, I think, let's see, I've got, I think that's it. So it's, it's a short story, unfortunately. I wish there was more, but this is all there was. And then from there, it goes to a story by Tom Grummet. So there you go. Awesome. Copy that face Hold a few on. times. Ready? I mean, you got to recognize that face. I've totally swiped that face. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> I'm talking. There you go. Book of the week. Uh, Secret Origins number 39. If you can find it. High quality stuff. Uh, so good. This is that time of the night. Yeah. Where Meredith says, if you haven't already, hit that like and subscribe. Because Dave is well on his way. I don't know how many. I can't see how many subscribers you have. Over 140,000. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's yeah, it's great. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Awesome sauce. The page here. All right. And then smash the like button. So Kenny Wang does not have a, a coronary. Need Kenny to. Kenny has a, always has seems to have a like goal. A goal. What's the, I don't know what the goal is tonight. But we don't want him blowing anybody up. Whoa. He has threatened in the past. Really? <laughs> Tagmo Model Works has a super chat for $20. Tag says, hi, Finches. I watched the two most recent portfolio reviews you and Rob did. I thought you both did a very good job encouraging and explaining to the artists the truth about their work. I hope you guys can continue to do that. Uh, thank you very much, Kevin. And we absolutely Tag, will. That's Tagmo. Oh, I, I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Tagmo. I'm sorry. You had just mentioned Kevin Mandel, didn't you? No. Well, there you go. Kevin you. on the brain. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, Maybe yeah. was Kevin there at that stream? I think he was. Yeah. Maybe that's. I'm um, thinking back, back yeah. in time. Well, thank you very much, Tagamo. I really appreciate it. And yeah, absolutely. We will definitely be doing uh, more of those. Um, I just talked to Robert a couple times last week, and we'll be planning one um, as soon as he's got time, too. I mean, I know he's he's pretty busy, too. So. Hopefully within a month, something like that, we'll, we'll look at getting another one going as quickly as we can. Oh, here's an explanation of the Iron Rod Ranch from Jason Jones. Iron Rod, hold to the rod, the iron rod, to strong and bright and true. The iron rod is the word of God. It will safely guide us through. Yeah, there you go. That's a good idea. Not bad. That is not bad at all. And only people who are in the know would know. Yeah. I like that. All right. 
Next super chat comes from Michael Johnson Curry for four ninety nine. Michael wants to know who should I work on trying to network with more editors, writers, or artists. I only have so many hours to social media. I want to focus correctly. Writers. Oh, pardon me. Yes. Writers, hundred percent writers. Oh, yeah, we're the best. Uh, no, they're they're all horrible people. I can tell you, <laughs> we're the best. <laughs> but writers are right now. The way it is, is you it, want the writer to want to work with you. Yes, if it's an independent book, then the writer is the the one that is is creating the story and looking for an artist. So, I think I'm going to just dark on that. So there's that. And then if it's a Marvel or DC book or um, Dynamite, for instance, um, books start with writers. And so the editor will say, uh, so who do you have in mind for the art? What kind of a style are you thinking? And so it's very much the writer that that dictates the the art that they, they pick. So, uh, yeah, writers. They are more likely to, hi to hire you out of the blue uh, I, not out of the blue. I mean, you're putting a lot of work into this, but I mean, uh, um, fresh than an editor who is more likely to just say, okay, I've got this because, person. I know they can meet a deadline. That's always going to be their priority. Because the writer wants to find the next hot thing. The writer is invested if in the story. there's cachet in that. Yeah. Now, the, the editor editors are very invested in, in things being as good as possible. They're too. invested in a timeline. But they are directly the responsible out. for yeah, getting that book out. And they're the ones that have to answer for it. When That's it does their job. Out. So exactly. they they tend to be a little more reluctant to just say, hey, um, you know, artists that I have not worked with before, would you like to give this a try? And please don't, you know, miss the deadline and get me fired. Yeah. So, yes, writers. All right. Next super chat comes from Al Almay. I hope I said that right for five dollars. Al Almay says J. Scott Campbell's pinned response on Twitter to the fixing of his art is hilarious. Kudos to him for handling it with humor while still making his point. Well, good for Jeff. You did not fail at your first super chat, LLMA, because I found it. I just looked right below. If you missed, if you do something like that, just do that. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, all of a sudden. But everybody gave advice on how to catch my attention. And then nobody, you know what I like? Nobody in the stream abuses the bold orange Meredith. Good group of people we have here. We have an amazing group of people on the stream. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Except for Henry, Henry Jeremick. Henry's the worst. The worst. The worst. Just Henry, like, bad banned. penny Jeremick. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Henry. Oh, Kidding. so funny. Ladarius Jackson has a super chat for four ninety nine. Ladarius says, hey, David, I found moving one of my vanishing points helps me turn shapes in perspective, but I'm still struggling. Any tips? Um, yeah, let me think about that for just a second. Okay. You know what? I'm going to just do this on the back here. All right. Tissue down here? No, I don't. Um, okay. Let's see. So, um, now I'm just going to use a cube. If I have a point here and a point here. And I draw the cube. I could draw the cube here, which means that it would be very tilted uh, this way. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it to that point. If I drew it here, then it would be tilted this way and be a little bit more even, a little bit more uh, biased toward this side. And so there's that. Now, the thing is, if you, if you move a point, uh, I would really have to... You have to move both points. Otherwise, you're really changing the whole perspective. So you actually don't need to so much move the point. Well, okay, look at this. And I just showed it just now. But if if you really want to change the perspective on something, then you just shift where your image is between those points. So I'm going to draw all the way over here. And my other point is here. And so that's going to cross over just about here, here. And you can see I'm looking at basically the, the front of this object and this side's very short. So that changes the perspective. So it, it, yeah, now, obviously when you're drawing a page, you can't just you know shift your whole page. So it is moving the points, but when you move one point, you have to move the other point. 
because if you bring them closer together, you'll start to get major distortions. Uh, so here's here's my shape. And you can see that this is distorted beyond what you would really see without like a crazy wide, wide angle lens. Uh, a, a really good example of that is here. I'm going to draw a floor. Here's one point. Here's my other point here. So anything up in through here, you would actually be able to see in your field of view and it looks fine. But anything down here, once you start getting vertical diamonds like this, you're going beyond what your eye would be able to see and things start looking really distorted and stretched. So you need to think of your points as, you know, if you if you are drawing, you know, here's your shape and you kind of want it to be like this. And this is going to be really short here. Then, you know, one point's going to be here and one point's going to be, you know, I guess here. So, you know, sketch your shape in first and then work out your actual points based on where your shape is. So if I want to figure and I want to be looking up at them, I'm just going to sketch him in. Here he is. And so I, I've got a point here and I, I want it all the way down at his feet. So I'm going to draw my point here and then I can just work out the rest of the figure. So here's my my pelvis, my knees. I mean, this is a terrible figure, but, you know, you get the picture. My head's going to be up here and it's going to line up here. And then my other point will be way over here. And so I'm just going to kind of rough that in. And so there you go. I'm basing my points on the figure rather than the other way around, uh, which I think might help you in that case. If you're having trouble with getting your figure to turn with the points, turn your figure and then work out the points to fit what you're, what you're turning. So it's the worst figure I've ever drawn in my whole life. Oh, moving on from that to a super chat from Sheldon Martin for $10. Hey, Sheldon, Martin. Sheldon says, well, cheese. I got to go to a B-Day dinner. I'll catch the stream after. <laughs> Thanks for getting the stream on this week. Have a good night, everybody. Well, enjoy your eating some cake, Sheldon. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry we were a day late and a dollar short. Yes. My name well, used to say that all the time. At least we got to say hi. So We did. Appreciate you coming by, Sheldon. Sing happy birthday on for Meredith. And then, you know how I said nobody abuses the orange Meredith Finch? Yep. Everybody's abusing it. <laughs> so right. we will be banning page one comics jimmy what? reyes <laughs> and kenny wang and oh kenny wang multiple times <laughs> on his <laughs> on his battler <laughs> just kidding well maybe not bandwagon ranch says honest battler <laughs> everybody's <laughs> on the bandwagon that might be a good name for that might be an appropriate name for the farm all right <clears throat> Next super chat comes from Gualberto Palencia. I hope I said that right. For five dollars, Gualberto, you said once that you learned to draw anatomy by redrawing a book. What is the name of the book? And another artist gave you that advice. Who was it? Kyle Hotz gave me the advice. A phenomenal artist uh, <clears throat> who you can follow on Instagram. He posts quite a bit on Instagram. He's very, very good. He's he's very he's very influenced by. Um, um, Bernie Wrightson, you can really see it in his art, beautiful stuff, uh, and an incredibly uh, supportive and, and great guy. Um, and the book is George Bridgman, George Bridgman's Guide to Life Drawing. It might have a slightly different name. It might be, I think there's um, Drawing from Life or whatever. But anyway, if you type in George Bridgman's uh, Life Drawing, you'll find the book. You can easily find it on Amazon. It's very, very good. Uh, and it worked wonders for me as a, kind of a basis and, and taking, uh, uh I, I was finding that I, I was getting lost in style. I was trying to draw things like Jim Lee and things like Mark Silvestri are my favorite artists. And I was struggling because, um, I didn't really have a, a basis and that really kind of gave me a really good grounded basis to then, you know, expand and explore those artists from there. So. I, I found it to be very, very useful for me. I, I also recommend, by the way, uh, and this was not recommended by Kyle Hot, so, you know, take it with a grain of salt, but um, Andrew Loomis, it's incredible, uh, all the way around for not just figure drawing, but also perspective and uh, composition and a lot of things. He's a, a great teacher. 
All right. <clears throat> Next super chat comes from the band Page One Comics for yeah. four ninety nine. Jimmy says, "You're drawing one of my wife Anna's favorite Wonder Woman." Ah, well, thank you, Jimmy. That's um, Jason Faybox Wonder Woman, right? Yeah. Well, this is the. Uh, you know what? In so much inspired as, by Jason, uh, I gotta say, yeah, uh, the, the Wonder Woman that they have been using for a while looks so much like what Jason was doing. So, yeah. if it's not from Jason, come on, I, I think he's. He certainly influenced the design. Heavily I would think. Yeah. Um, Robert Marzullo, ban me, ban me, <laughs> banned. <laughs> you can't ask to be banned, Robert. It has to be natural. <laughs> we can't ban Robert Marzullo. We can't. I mean, we could. That's like bad karma. We would never. No, recover no. If he from. takes me off, I'll ban him. Banned. <laughs> how did how did your whole career and channel with... go bad? What what happened? We what banned... would you say was the end for you you know then we banned robert Marzullo. that's right that's when it would all be over we'd be done and i cast that, a shadow that would be the end it would be um i was gonna say something i forgot what though mm, so important we're talking about wonder woman mm. jason's wonder woman oh right yeah i remember what i was gonna say speaking of jimmy um, um I did a cover, well, it was a, a sketch that I did that Jimmy uh, turned into a cover. He inked it beautifully, and he did such an incredible job. Uh, and so he sent me the the uh, the inked and colored version by him and Andrew Dollhouse, who they both, I mean, I love what they did. Uh, you can find it at Page One Comics. There's actually a link in the description here. So, you know, check that out. I meant to, and I apologize, Jimmy, I had the image. I wanted to put it up. Um, <coughs> tonight and and show people i'll do that next week so otherwise this is going to be the me searching through my computer all night stream because i don't organize my files very well i'm sure i can find it you want to find it here no we're moving on all right. we'll find it next later. week next week we only have so much time and all right fair enough Mayor, the, uh, you know mayor starts i've already started yawning it's not even 9 30. all right this this baby turns into a pumpkin yes. plus i still have to check on my chickens before I go to bed, I gotta check my chickens. Beep, yeah. beep, 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 yeah. beep. That's my next soundtrack. <laughs> Paolo Camp Kag Kagampan. I hope I did that right. Paolo has a super chat for five pounds. Hi, David and Meredith. I'm 35 years old and I just quit my job as an architect to pursue a career in comics and digital art. What advice do you have for us latecomers? Um, uh, okay, well, you know, actually, I, I do have some advice, and that would be, you know, just in terms of being different from um, the advice I would normally give is it is very difficult to get in uh, at a later age, and that is not because anybody has reservations about hiring somebody that's not young. It, there's no, there's nothing like that, and it's not more difficult. Um, it's not like the, the talent goes away and you can't do it anymore. It is nothing like that. The The number one thing that makes it very, very difficult to pursue this as a career when you're older is you have responsibilities and you have, you know, a family and, and uh, bills and a house. And, you know, and if that's something that you are able to uh, overcome, then, yeah, absolutely. Because it, it really is. When I started, I started working for Top Cow Productions uh, with Mark Silvestri. Um, I was an intern. So I, I moved down to uh, San Diego and I lived in an apartment, an artist apartment with um, Joe Benitez and Billy Tan and um, Ryan Benjamin was there. Uh, a whole bunch of us. It was 10 people in, in a little apartment and I did nothing. I made a hundred dollars a week for a little while and I barely slept. It's all I did. I just drew you know, all day for a year. I mean, more really. Uh, and I couldn't have done that. I couldn't have made the the move if I had other responsibilities. And that would have been an opportunity that would, I don't know where I'd be if I couldn't have taken that. Um, so yeah, it, it things are more difficult when you're older. Absolutely. And that's just, that is a factor. That is not any kind of a thing that uh, needs to stop you, but it's something to consider is it can be difficult to uh, devote the kind of time and resources to it that you can when you're younger. 
I, I think it's it's a lot like going to school. You know, you go to university or high school or whatever it is when you're young. It's much easier than when you have to go to night school. So, and unfortunately, this really does. It, it's a it's a career path that you have to be all in on because it's hard. It will beat you up. Uh, I don't care where you are in your career. Um, you could be the most successful at what you do out there in the world. Uh, people love what you do. People get joy from it and you will sign online and you will find people that want to tell you that your art's wrong because it's not realistic, <laughs> you know, just like Jeff Campbell and uh, that will happen. And, you know, uh, you have to be, you have to be very devoted and, um, and know that this is what you want in order to weather that kind of thing. Cool. There are people that want to tear you down. And, you know, these are people that they don't I, have me. I want yeah, to tear you they down. They don't have anything going on themselves. They would love nothing more than to ruin somebody that I is wanted, doing something beautiful. I want to tear you down. <laughs> yes, I, I know that. I don't like to say it. That's my job. I tear you down. All right, Spoons and Forks has a super chat for $5. Spoons and Forks wants to know, have you ever thought about starting a school or class? Something like in-person teaching? Not during COVID. But I think it would, I'm, I'm, I'm answering for you, David. Okay. So now I'm stopping answering for you now. Okay, no. We and answer for you. The reason why. You speak for you. Okay, sure, I'll speak for me. The reason why is uh, I live, you know, basically in the middle of nowhere. You know, I, I'm in Windsor, Ontario. I shouldn't say the middle of nowhere. I love it here. It's great. And it's a great community. It's, you know, it's Canada, which, uh, you know, it's a good place to live. But it's not exactly New York City or, you know, an easy place for, for people to just, for me to build a school. That's number one. Number two is I don't know that I'd be very well qualified to um, uh, handle the business requirements of running a school. That would be also, when would he, when would he draw? And and this is the other problem. My job is, is not teaching. You know, I love teaching. I'm, I get so much out of it. I'm so glad I came back and started doing this again. I, I had some people at conventions uh, like Lance DeBoye, who I have not seen tonight. Is he here? No Lance DeBoye here tonight. Um, but yeah, he said, Hey, um, you know, when are you going to do some stuff on, on YouTube again? Are you going to do any tutorials? And it really kind of made me think about it. And then I had Jimmy Reyes on his, on, I was on his channel and made me kind of made the jump. Uh, I love it, but it is definitely not how, you know, we make money here. So, you know, yeah, I, I do need to keep it in perspective. Oh my gosh. This is so funny. Angel Morales says, we can't just ban people, especially if it's the first time. Your banning should your first banning should be special. <laughs> <laughs> this is all we in response to, have a, to to Robert asking to be banned. We need to have a banning ceremony. You need to you need to, it needs to be natural. <laughs> just come. Can't demand it. But all Robert right. Marzullo is he's a special case. <laughs> that sounds not how I meant it. Needs to be special. <laughs> All right, let's. Ladarius Jackson has another super chat for nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Ladari, let's move to Ladarius. Okay. Ladarius says, "Thanks for the advice. Just curious, have you ever seen a comic you worked on become an animation, and were you part of the process? Also, do you have a favorite project that you worked on?" Um, I have seen stuff that I've done become an animation, and uh, I've seen work that I've done be in movies, which is very very cool. Not much. I mean, I can't claim. You know, uh, uh, like the Winter Soldier, I mean, nothing like that. Uh, hmm. I did co-create Maria Hill, um, and I did not do the design for Ronan in uh, um, Avengers. I actually, I did do the design. Joe Kassad hated it and redesigned it. I didn't follow the design brief, so I can't really blame him. So it's his design, but I did draw it first. So, and that was in the movie, and I don't even care that it wasn't the, my design they used. I drew him first. It was cool to see. So there are a few things like that. There's been some animation stuff. Actually, After 89, which is a book that I did uh, at Image at Top Cow around 99, 98, 99. Uh, they did a pilot for a cartoon uh, for that, which was very cool. It was really well done. Unfortunately, it never went beyond that point, but that was cool to see. Um, 
I'm not sure. I'm sure there are maybe a few other. I don't know. There's not much though, truthfully. Um, like I did New Avengers, and that was such a huge thing for me. It it really launched Avengers, changed Avengers from what it ever was before. Uh, it was a huge seller at the time, which was great for my career. But the stuff that you really see in movies um, kind of spun off from that, like um, uh, Civil War. Civil War um, was part of you know the New Avengers kind of line, and it was it was Mark Millar who's absolutely incredible. It was a, a crossover, so it was you know I was before that, so I didn't do Civil War, and I wish I could claim that I did. Let's just say that Stephen Niven, I'm taking your Civil War. Dave, it's mine now. What? I have a super chat, an important super chat okay. from Mike Montgomery for five dollars. Mike says, "Dave, don't forget the tiara." Dang it! <sighs> okay, thank you, Mike. <laughs> thank you, and really, thank you for you know. Donating a super chat in order to let me know. Didn't she look a little bareheaded? What is it with me? I mean, her hair me? looks phenomenal. I wish I had hair that looked that great, but yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, no, you don't. Um, no, I mean, I wish your hair looked that. <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh. oh, where's the <laughs> the buzzer? <laughs> <laughs> John Johnny D. Hopefully it wasn't that loud. Johnny D is a super everybody's like, whoa, what just happened there? That's a super chat for five dollars. Do you have any advice on how to make neater sketches? And also, what is the best art medium to draw on? Well, if nothing else, I feel like Connor Ducharme showed that you can make art on even the most crappy with, with the crappiest instruments on like from dollar store materials he's using dollar store canvases and brushes like he's yes. not going to michael's and he's making gorgeous stuff he is okay so and that is true it really is but that's not the question and right. it is a very very valid question and i've I, it, your life is going to be so much easier when you're working with the best most appropriate tools possible so i wouldn't want to say oh the tools don't matter they didn't they matter you know I mean, having so, a computer where I don't have to slam my space bar would be nice. If you're working on the on the computer, if you're working, you know, digitally, I would say, <clears throat> my opinion, um, uh, Clip Studio Paint is the best. Uh, Jay Fabok uses that. So, you know, that to me, there you go. But Jazz Singh uh, uses, I want to say, I think he used Procreate. Maybe if he's still here, maybe you could let me know if I'm wrong. Anyway, uh, but for paper... You want to use now. I use 200 series Strathmore. Uh, this is it's actually a little cheaper, but I find it really, really takes the pen well. It's a good paper, um, but ultimately it doesn't really matter. You can use 300, 500, whatever. I use smooth uh, Bristol board, so um, vellum is is similar, just has a little bit more tooth. Uh, it really well, it works well for painting. Generally speaking, for inking, I like smooth. It's a little bit easier. So, but it doesn't matter still that you just, you don't want to be using cheap paper. If you can get a good Bristol board, I really recommend Strathmore. They're better, in my opinion, than, than the competitors. Uh, in terms of tools, this is a 2H lead in a lead holder. And it's, I know you can't see the logo, but it, it's a um, uh, stapler. It's a stapler. Anyway, it's cheap. It doesn't matter. You could buy any kind. It really doesn't matter. It's just a lead holder. I use a uh, lead pointer you stick it in the end like this spin it around sharpens it there you go these things um they lose their sharpness after a while and you have to replace them i've got one over here that here check this out watch me try and sharpen with this thing oh i can hardly get it to go and i just break my leads anyway so i had to retire that one um as it sits on your desk yep you know what retire means for stuff like that throw it in the garbage i know i i uh, i still have it there it's like a keepsake not and uh, kneaded eraser. I don't even know what type it is. It really doesn't matter. It's just kneaded eraser. And then my regular uh, inking eraser. I don't know why it's got pen all over it. Anyway, whatever. Um, and then term in terms of inking tools, uh, just a good uh, Micron or competitor. They're all similar enough. This is... Uh, have I, I've been using this. So this is my Tombow. 
Uh, they're very, very good. The competitor, the, the other one that I'm really kind of aware of, this is a, a Zebra. And uh, they are just about the same. I'm using Tombows right now. Uh, I kind of like them a little more. Not always. I don't know. It can depend. But they, they're all pretty good. So there you go. And for the brush, I don't recommend these because they don't give you any detail versus using a proper brush, like a good um, sable. But I use these because the ink squirts out of here. And so I don't have to dip it. I don't have ink that I can spill. I don't make a mess. And there you go. So yeah, that's that's basically a quick rundown of the tools. All right. Next super chat comes from Calvin Gordon for four dollars and ninety nine cents. Calvin says, "Hey Dave, I was always curious. How are you with coloring? I've never seen you do it. It would be so dope to see." Um, hundred uh, percent. Well, thank you. I've done a little bit of coloring. I probably ten years ago. Or so I kind of went into a bit of a kick where I thought, hey, I want to color some stuff. And so I, I did some colors. I colored the uh, cover for um, Justice League of America, uh, just Justice League of America um, with Jeff Johns issue one. I colored that cover. Um, I colored a cover that I did for uh, Brian Hitch for his comic uh, years ago. Um, so a couple of things. And then, yeah, I just I found it, it's it's. I only have so much time in the day and I, I kind of have to devote it to, you know, I, I kind of get into a little obsessive periods like, oh, I want to try this. I want to try that. Right now, for me, it's much more painting. And the thing that's nice about painting is I actually have a painting versus coloring where I, I don't. So I, I prefer painting. Eric Grove Art says, Meredith Finch, I'm glad I was not sipping my coffee when the buzzer sounded. <laughs> it would have been a guaranteed shorted out keyboard. Uh, yeah, nobody likes the book. Uh, you deserved it. Brad Scott Art. I'm not sure everybody on the stream deserved it, but you deserved it. Brad Scott Art has a super chat for $20. Brad says, thanks, Dave. How much effort should I put into details on smaller panels? Are the big shapes and composition enough for these? I work traditionally on 11 by 17 boards and as always, Miss Meredith rules. Thank you so much for the super chat, Brad. Yeah, thank you very much, Brad. I, I'm going to say... I put a lot in, you know, really detail them. As Dave much never as you neglects can. the small panels. I really, because they, uh, they connect your story. I mean, they're a flow of your story and I don't want my story to fall apart panel to panel. So I definitely don't um, neglect them at the same time. If you get too detailed, it won't print uh, no matter how good the printers are now. And they are much better than they used to be. It prints a lot more than it, it used to. Uh, it can start to close in. So, you're working on paper. I would say that you're probably pretty good there, but you really want to make sure that your detail is very controlled. If it isn't in small panels, you can really end up with a mess. So that would be my kind of biggest caveat with that is uh, if you struggle with with fine detail, that kind of small rendering, and it's not something that you really have a firm grasp on, avoid it and just be more graphic with uh, small panels. At that point, I would really recommend, you know, for small panels, working with a style more like this where, you know, this is basically a medium panel. Everything's in there. Um, it's not overly detailed, and it's very, very clear and crisp. It really, really works. It's a good way to go. Uh, so, yeah. Cool. Paul Essenson has a super chat for seven nine nine. Hello there, he says in his Obi-Wan voice. I don't have an Obi-Wan voice. <laughs> Hello there. Is that... I, f I, I feel like Obi-Wan was... Um, train spotting guy you and mcgregor right uh well the young obi-wan yeah the old obi-wan was um sir i'm the worst yeah him names. yeah him. didn't your wonder woman he cost was on the bridge on the river Kwai. he was you know <sighs> paul wants to know didn't your wonder woman costume design get used in the movies no we and meredith actually looked at it and said hey you know there's similarities and maybe i feel like there were but I, I don't know. And I don't, if there are similarities, certainly not enough that we could say, Hey, that's our caution, you know? So I, I yeah, maybe. If, I, it, if did we get credited, we did not. I no, don't know. But I, I don't but, know that they used it and it wasn't yeah. similar enough that I could say, Oh, they used it. So, you know, I don't know that a credit is really appropriate. All right. Yes. They should have credited us. Just, just because we, it would have been awesome. Yeah. Cause then, cause yeah. You know what? They should have credited everybody that is here right now. Yeah. We should all got credits in that movie. 
All of us. Every Everybody. The Finch on. flock needs to credit the Finch flock. That's right. Finch flock it's forever. Like movie tax. You want to make a movie? Finch. We all need credit. Finch flock forever. Dustin Wilson has a super chat for five dollars. Hello, Finches. Mr. Finch drew Batman at my school once and gave it to my ex girlfriend. Ah. Inspired by your work, forever, forever. Ugh. Right, now I'm getting tired. Forever evil is a favorite. Well, thank you very much. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you very much. I'm assuming Dustin's local then. Yeah, I would, I would guess. Yeah. A W I A I W. I have not. I don't know what school that is. I have not done a demo in a school in quite no, some time. In a while. It has been a while. Well, wow. COVID. Yeah, Kids have barely been in school for a while. Yeah. Wayne Bruce has a super chat for $5. Wayne says, hi, guys. You are fantastic. Your videos have helped me improve my drawing, so thank you. Meredith takes all the credit for that. You're welcome. Can you add Greg Capullo's The Creech to the drawing list? Oh, yeah, for sure. Definitely. Absolutely. Actually, somebody... I don't know if we'll ever draw anything off the drawing list, but it's nice to have the list. <laughs> yeah. I feel like... We do. It happens. It sometimes. Sometimes happens. But, you know, you throw enough darts at a board, you're going to hit the you're going to hit the board eventually. Somebody asked if I could do um, Green Arrow. And I'd like to do that one at some point, too. So, Rose, yeah. Green Arrow, the, the amount of characters I've really thought. Rose, can you draw Rose? Yeah, I should do that. Are you going to paint Rose on Friday, Thursday? No, blah, 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 no, blah. we're doing Captain America. And uh, <laughs> I started to say this before. The um the course by Ariel Olivetti is Captain America. He paints Captain America. Uh, so we're gonna do the same thing because we want to keep it as gonna go along. Right. Perfect. And I will have my Captain America drawing uh up on in the community tab uh tomorrow morning. I want to say tonight, but I, I'm gonna go to bed. So yeah. the first thing that I do tomorrow morning is I'm going to get that drawn. I haven't done it yet. Queen. And uh that'll be up there so you guys can have an idea of, of what i'm going to be doing with it and if you want to do something similar i would recommend you do something fairly similar it doesn't you know you don't have to do exactly that but uh we want to eliminate as many variables as possible because it is a very very simple technique that he uses i know ariel lolavetti has I a lot of let me inter interrupt you for a minute i just want wayne to know i did add creech to the list okay good he uses a lot of different techniques and I studying his work, I can see where he's he's tried this, he tried that, and all beautifully. So this isn't really the way he always works, but it is a really great Hello, um, kind of Still distilled alive, technique that just certainly worked for me really well. And I already have ideas of things that I'd like to do. I, I was talking to Eric today, actually, and I was saying, you know, I'd like to try this and I'd like to try that, and we're going to do that on Saturday. And I'm sure we will have an updated live stream with you know some new techniques that we're trying. Uh, fairly soon but for right now we want i wanted to keep it to what we have kind of working now and so that's where we're at all right all right sir alec guinness thank you yeah thank you uh it's embarrassing not being able to remember a name like that yes i see you there Patches, everybody's patches. Cat. Hello, Hello, cat. cat. Still alive. Still alive. Is that what right. you hit? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. oh, wrong button. Sorry, guys. Tell me you didn't hit the buzzer. <laughs> I did. I totally hit the buzzer by mistake. I meant to hit the clock because I was yawning and I wanted to say, Dave. Well, that'll wake you up. How much time left? How much time left? Uh, How much time left, sir? 15 minutes. I should actually be finished right around 10 o'clock. Oh, perfect. So you're good. I'm so sorry about the buzzer. Hey, where am I in my chat? 9123. Cause I see it right in front of me says, are you doing studies sometimes to improve, learn things to draw? Just curious what your female is being drawn. Not as great as your usual. Awesome. I missed the end of it. Let's see. Your usual awesome Superman. Is this a proof of men better than feminists? <laughs> I made the mistake of reading the wrong question. <laughs> That's what I get for starting. 
Yeah, don't don't read questions. Okay. Uh, instead, I'll read CC C Comics question. Officially, do, I'm do you have any leave advice? To you, yeah. Do you have any advice on drawing? And I ask this while my dog is biting on my feet. I just wanted to read about his dog biting on his foot. So there you go. Uh, what? You're just in your own head right now. You weren't even paying attention to me. No, just, That's I fine. Don't... I don't pay attention to you either. All right. Be that way. All right. Oh, Obi-Wan said hello there when he first saw R2-D2. This is not my forte. Remembering this moment from movies. <laughs> I'm sorry, people. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I failed you. Henry Jermick wants to know if the list is in the infinity vase. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's on my computer. And Lance DeBoyer is here. But the infinity vase is... You see it back there? It's right by my head. I see it. Here. It's unfortunate. Lance, you asked if Lance was here. Oh, he's here. Good. Lance is here. All right. All right. Julio Torres says, Come on, guys. It's my birthday. Happy birthday from David Maris would be awesome. Happy birthday, Julio. Happy birthday. I already sang happy birthday tonight. So I'll have to sing it next time. It feels like my weekly song. Happy birthday to you. I'll sing it again. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Julio. And many more. Happy birthday to you. There we go. There we go. Patches is the guardian of the list, according to Rike Inglés123. Now he knows I have to kill him. <laughs> Patches, don't worry. We've got you covered. We've got you covered. Hold on. I have a sound effect for that. For what? You you realize you went quiet, right? Yeah, I have a sound effect for that. Oh, for you going quiet? Yeah. Okay. That's crickets. Oh, um, good. Let me go over here. I find if I'm drawing over here, all you see is my hand. So, everything say it did not buzz on purpose. I'm sorry for the mini heart attack. So, David? Yes, Merida. What video games are you playing right now? Oh, you got to be kidding me. Why? Mm -mm. Oh, El Padrino's here. So he made it back. Where did El Padrino go? He uh, He had work. Stuff he maybe he's so he maybe he's from work looking maybe. from work. The chat's gone quiet. We have six hundred and thirty six likes. We have thirteen minutes left to go. I feel like it's possible we could get to seven hundred. I'm gonna throw it out there. Why not six fifty even? Something, somebody, somebody, somewhere, something Wonder Woman like happened this week. It showed up in my stream on my Facebook, but I cannot remember for the life of me what it was. So who can tell me what that was? I, feel like... I know you can't, Dave. You are not on Facebook ever. Mm -mm. Do you know what this weekend is? No. I mean, aside from the birthday of my eldest child, it's. Also, Mother's Day. Oh, oh, well, good to know that now. I bet you've never seen that picture. <laughs> <laughs> so what it is, because, you, you know. show it. It's 10 centimeters, and it shows like a baby's head on, on top of the, you know, I'll show it here. Just give it to me. Just so, yeah, when I was in here laughing about, anyway, you that's can move it, it down. And it has a it. caption. It says, Mother's Day is next weekend. This is what 10 centimeters dilation looks like. Buy her something nice. So, there you go. There you go. Oh my gosh. Speaking of Mother's Day, I always like 
to make sure I get my uh, my flowers the first weekend of May for Mother's. I like to have them before Mother's Day, right? My my garden flowers. I waited. This is how it's going these days. I waited in line for an hour in my car to be able to get out and get flowers at one of our local greenhouses. Yeah. And when I left, there was as many cars behind me as there was when I got there. So you basically gained nothing from being there first thing in the morning. Well, I, I mean, I gained a broader selection of plants. Ah, that's I'm not my work. That's true. I'll give you that. Yeah. Yeah. By the time you get in halfway through the day, it's all completely gone. It's nothing but ferns. Yeah. Dead. Nobody wants that. All right. Stroke bat thing has a super chat for a dollar, but I don't see a comment. Well, thank you very much. And, and honest Badler has a super chat for a dollar 99. May the flock be with you, everyone. Uh, we're going to change it from May the 4th. <sighs> May the flock. Oh. Just want to make sure I don't miss Ben. Oh, I bleeped. Tagmo Model Works tag as a super chat for $10. Did everyone see that Disney created an actual, I saw this, an actual lightsaber? You can't cut people's arms off in a bar, but it does open up and close and it lights. By the way, in case you forgot, you guys rock. Thanks. <sighs> Thank you, Takamo. Is this something you could buy? Yes. Yes, Whoa. this is new. It's like an actual lightsaber with different colors. Oh, man. I'm going to end up being... You ever see the, the videos that are really embarrassing with the, with the fat guy that. waving around a lightsaber and everybody laughs? I'm going to be that you're guy. You're going to be that guy. Hey, are you saying you're, gonna, you're getting fat? Hey, well, no. I can say it. You can't. That's how that works. Fat guy. Oh. I didn't say it. You said I'm going to be the fat guy. Yeah, I did say that. Our Jedi says, Meredith Finch, please let Dave know I wish him a happy Star Wars day. May the fourth be with you. Thank you very much, Our Jedi. Really appreciate it. Happy. Is it Mother's Day this weekend? I, why would I know? I don't know. Or is it next week? <laughs> I shouldn't say it like that. I should know. I should know. Yeah, you should know. I buy my own gift. I'm, right. you know what? It's fine. I want to say my mother is is not the best with that kind of thing either, but that's so not true. She never forgets my birthday. No, she doesn't. Mother's Day is the ninth. The ninth is that? That's this Sunday. Yeah. Yep. Time's flying. Get your mama something nice. Yep. Hi, Omar Mufti has a super chat for five dollars. Omar says, "Hi, David Meredith. Wanted to ask this on the stream with Rob, but what do you do to get yourself to draw every day? I want to get into that habit." Um, yeah, I, I don't have a secret for that beyond, um, you just have to do it. Like there are days and it will still happen. I'll have days where I just won't draw. Like I'll just, I'm just burnt and I can't do it. And I, I lose the day. Uh, and that's fairly rare, but, and that actually tends to be more a result of me just not sleeping. Like I'll, I'll work until really late at night. I wake up the next day and I think, Hey, I gained time because I got some work done and it really didn't gain any time, excuse me, because I'm just wiped. So other than that, though, um, the secret to it, it's it's like exercising also. And obviously, I'm not an expert on that one right now. But um, you decide what you really want. And if you are not drawing every day, then you have to be honest with yourself that it's not really what you really, really want. If you really want it, you have no choice but to do it every day. I don't care how much you want it. You're not going to want to draw every day but that will give you the drive to force yourself to do it. So I, I think maybe it'd be helpful just to think of it in those terms. Um, it's, there are people out there that, that want to do this for a living that will be drawing every day. It's all they do every day, all day. They put everything they have into it and that's going to leave you behind if you, if you're not doing that. So uh, yeah, it's, I find with everything there, I can have a lot of enthusiasm and then I can just pass. And when it passes, it passes hard and it's very difficult for me to maintain momentum and the secret for me to uh, keep going during those times is it's just discipline. You know, it's just something you have to sit down and do. And uh, it's like answering email. I'm the worst with email. The only, like I cannot answer email for days 
And I finally, what I do is I just, I take a couple of breaths, gear myself up. And then I open the email. Once I have it open, then responding to email is not so hard. It's, I can't even open it. You know, I just, I can't face it. So yeah, you have to just take a couple of breaths, plunk yourself down at the desk. And then um, once you're sitting there, you'll start going. I think just sitting down at the desk where you're going to work is, is the biggest step. Ross Klein says, Dave and Meredith, I'm not pushing or anything, but I will pay real money to see milk and cheese appear in the rubble of your next picture. <laughs> and if my wife knew I was doing this, she would kill me. This must be an inside joke between Ross and his wife. Yeah, you know, milk and cheese is is um, characters <laughs> by, again, Evan Dorkin. It's a little hey, mouse, Evan. right? No, milk and cheese. Okay, unless I'm wrong here, it's it's characters by Evan Dorkin. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty funny. I couldn't draw them just like I, I, I mean, I'm well I'm, aware of them. I'm but Googling it. Yeah, drawing them just sight unseen. I couldn't do. Wayne Blackman has a super chat for $5. Wayne says, happy Mother's Day, Meredith. Thanks for the reminder. Thank you, Wayne. Yeah, thank you. Dave, thanks you guys for the reminder yeah, as absolutely. well. My mother's birthday was last month and I, uh, I called the next day. So, yeah, I'm not hey, exactly. At least you called. Uh, yeah. Well, at least you reminded me to call. I, I remind you to call the day of. I love my mother very, very much. I'm just not. I'm not good with that. I, you know, live in my own head way too much. All right. Is that it? That's going to be it for this one. I'm going to go ahead and sign it. Oh. <sighs> You really do go out of your way to make your signature as teeny as possible. Okay. I need a microscope to read that. I need my readers. <laughs> I think it's it's plenty big enough. I don't like a big, like a massive that takes over the picture. All right. So, yeah, this is it. I'm going to scan this right now and get it up on the community tab. Thank you, everyone, so much for coming and spending Tuesday night this week with us. Apologies again for not being able to uh, be here on Monday. Um, we certainly will be here Monday next week. And Monday next week. Eric and I will be on, on Thursday at 8 o'clock for our painting stream. I'm pumped about that. Meredith Hopefully we'll, will see you not. there. Meredith will be there too. She'll be moderating she will the chat. Not, I know she, she will won't. not be there. It's actually, it's going to be tough. We won't have a moderator for our chat. No, I don't know what won't. we're going to do about oh, that. Oh, poor babies. You'll figure it out. We'll have to figure something out. But I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to it. There'll be a lot more of this. And that is crickets. You okay. should just put music on. Yeah, right. And anyway. then you can, in the background, and then you can talk. All right. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, so much. Just saying. Uh, yeah, this was fun. It Have was a good week, good everybody. Wonder oh, shoot. Be good to your mom on Sunday. I can't just close it out. Why not? Because I forgot to draw the... Did you forget? Oh, the stripes. Does she have stars? You know stars what? I'm going to miss the stars. Because they kind of, you know, here's, here's a corner of a star. There. I can't believe I forgot her stripes. Distracted, distracted much. I closed my computer. Now that there's anything happening in the chat, I can't read it. Right. I like literally closed out. Don't talk in the chat. I can't get it back. Oh, I already said goodbye. Most people have said, okay, we're out. I'm almost done. There we go. All right. Now we're done. All we're right. good. All right. <laughs> All right. That looks better. Now that it's finished. Thank you, everyone, so much again. And we will see you guys uh, next week and on Thursday uh, if you guys are looking forward to the painting. Hanging stream, up now. Which I hope you are. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night.